In Acts 17.11 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. Good morning and welcome to Searching the Scriptures. This is devotional number 516, and today's date is January 7th, 2019. This week I thought we would take a look at Psalm 61, particularly verse 2, but we'll cover verse 1 as well. Psalm 61, 2 is a verse that is a tremendous source of comfort, encouragement, and hope. To me personally over the years and doubtlessly has enabled countless of God's saints to overcome seemingly impossible circumstances and events to remind them that God is in control of all things and uses them for the spiritual growth and maturity of each of his elect. Perhaps today you are in the midst of a trial or burden that seems totally insurmountable for you to bear. May God bless this portion of His Word to each of our hearts, casting all our cares upon Him, for He careth for you, as 1 Peter 5, 7 promises, because He alone is sufficient to meet every need and carry every burden, because He is the divine comforter. In Psalm 61, 1-2, we read, to the chief musician upon Neganah, a psalm of David. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee, when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. One can certainly relate to the twofold plea hear my cry and attend unto my prayer as the only source of true help is found in God himself and in the patience and comfort of the scriptures according to Romans 15 4 that we might have hope. Each of these expressions are only used a handful of times in the Old Testament Wonderfully, the genuine saint can approach God as his Father with the words, hear my cry or attend unto my prayer, as Jesus himself petitioned in the Garden of Gethsemane. And we want to keep in mind that Gethsemane means wine press or olive press because Christ was enduring the, the wrath of God the second time, even though it was not for sin. Nonetheless, the agony that he was going through, not only in the garden, but also uh, on the cross itself, uh, we find this very tender utterance where he says, Abba, Father. And Galatians 4, 6 likewise uh, uses this same term, Abba is Strong's number 5, and Father is 3962. And because ye are sons, God hath sent forth the Spirit of His Son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. The following are two illustrations of each of these two Hebrew expressions, hear my cry and attend unto my prayer, respectively. Psalm 106, 44 records, Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction. Speaking of the Israelites during their 40-year sojourn in the wilderness, Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry. And that wilderness sojourn is very uh, parallel 
to our time right now that we're going through this uh, extended day of judgment. Psalm 66, 19 also affirms, but verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. I'll read uh, Psalm 61, 2 again. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. The two Hebrew words from the end, which is 7097, and of the earth, earth is 70, uh, 776, Together, they're used in a variety of ways, and very often we find them in the context of judgment, as some of these next verses indicate. And we also want to keep in mind that the, this expression uh, has to do, as these verses will, will show, the, the, uh, the furthest extent uh, from one end of the earth to the other, so to speak, or from one end of heaven to the other side of heaven. The first one I'd like us to consider is uh, verse 32 of Deuteronomy 4, 32 to 34, in which these two terms appear as upon the earth and ask from the one side. For ask now of the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other, whether there hath been any such thing, as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it. Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire? as thou hast heard and live? Or hath God essayed to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations, by signs, and by wonders, and by war, and by a mighty hand, and by a stretched out arm, and by great terrors, according to all that Jehovah your God did for you in Egypt, before your eyes. Deuteronomy 28, 49 to 51 states, Jehovah shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind or flocks of thy sheep until he have destroyed thee. This is speaking about Babylon. Psalm 19, 1 to 4 also declares to the chief musician a psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech nor language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out throughout all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun. And Psalm 46, 9 is again set in the context of our current day of judgment. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Similarly, Isaiah 43, 6 reveals the bringing in of God's elect from the end of the earth prior to Judgment Day, which commenced on May 21, 2011. I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth. 
Lord willing, we will continue examining the rest of this uh, wonderful verse throughout this week.